I've succeeded already. Okay. Um, I hope I don't get any blackouts, and I certainly hope I don't fall off the stage. So thank you for lighting the way there. Um, I'm just observing that second foreign language. I think it might be R or Python uh, from the previous uh, uh, statistics. Okay, so um, today I'm going to talk to you about Deep Racer. Um, I've got the hat as well, um, as well as a presentation. Um, what I'm going to talk about is what actually is Deep Racer in the context of learning, reinforcement learning. I am not a data scientist. I'm not an expert in machine learning. So um, what I'm going to share with you today is the story of how someone who doesn't know machine learning or doesn't know data analytics can take the journey from not knowing anything to knowing something, uh, which is what um, the AWS DeepRacer um, product is. It's a learning vehicle to help more people learn about machine learning. Um, and it actually comes from this desire um, we have to try and teach more people how to use machine learning, which we started in 2017 with a, a little camera device called the Deep Lens. Uh, and um, you might have seen uh, on the BBC uh, a few weeks ago, one of our engineers, he used this to, uh, in conjunction with a cat flap uh, to block his cat coming in uh, when it had a gift for him. Okay, which cats apparently do. I'm not a cat person, I'm a dog person, uh, but cats apparently, they're very fond of bringing gifts for their owners. So he took lots of pictures of his cat coming into his uh, cat flap with and without um, mice, birds, whatever, and then he programmed uh, the deep lens device, uh, looked um, at the images coming through, and then stopped the cat from coming in if it looked like it had something in. So we started that, that journey for people to learn how to um, start with machine learning with the deep lens. And then uh, last year at our big tech conference, we launched this car called Deep Racer. Uh, and what it is, it's a remote control car. It's 118 scale, so it's about so big. I, I would have loved to have brought one actually to show, but unfortunately, they're very hard to, to find. Uh, and on top of this car, we put in a Raspberry like uh, Intel computer and a camera. Okay, and it runs Ubuntu, uh, and then it has some uh, software that we put on there. Uh, it uses open Vino and um, some Intel reinforcement learning uh, open source libraries, uh, and that is the kind of the guts of the car. But together with that, we created a learning experience to help people um, be able to very, very quickly create their first learn uh, reinforcement learning model that would allow this car to drive around a racetrack. And then in order to try and motivate and incentivize learning, we then built a league system to try and make the developers compete against each other. Uh, and that's actually been really, really successful. We have um, thousands of developers all over the world competing against each other in very friendly ways. We have teams within companies creating virtual leagues to compete against their uh, other teams uh, for bragging rights. Um, and some companies are taking this so seriously that they have decided they're going to invest in learning um, for their people because they want to win the uh, championships that we hold at a regular um, uh, basis, and we've got the, the grand final for in December. But my interest in this and my journey starts uh, in 2014. Um, so I have two children. They're um, 14 and 16, uh, and they, uh, in their wake, anyone who's got children will know this, they leave a trail of destruction, old toys, um, and I uh, have a maker-type DNA, so I thought I could use some of these toys and do something interesting with them. So I took one of my son's remote control cars, and I put a Raspberry Pi with a camera, um, and I then used uh, a project um, that would allow you to collect images, train on those images, and attempt to navigate a course. So in this instance, the course is these sheets of paper that I've crudely put out. Now, as you can see, it's it's not the most uh, efficient uh, uh, kind of project. It, it kind of knows where it's going, uh, but that was, that was the beginning. I got the bug, okay, and I was really interested in improving this. And then I found um, a project called the Donkey Car Project, which took that to the next level. Um, and um, it gained traction. It had a big community. Actually, as a matter of interest, is anyone here familiar with the Donkey Car Project? No? OK. Oh, one person in the back. Fantastic. OK. And, and it was basically my project, but just done properly. OK. Uh, so you had a nice little GUI console. You would drive the car around this track. 
Um, and as you were driving it, it was collecting data images of the track. Um, and then you would train that model, um, deploy it into autopilot mode, and the car would try and go around that track as fast as possible. Um, and so we launched this product at our big event, and if the video works, I'm not sure why the video is not working, never mind. Um, that should be a car that's moving past the track. So we launched this, this product, okay, uh, and uh, we have regular championships uh, around the world, um, with each winner getting bragging rights and then a grand championship that's happening in, in November. Um, so that's kind of the background. My interest has, has been, because I was interested in uh, my own journey of learning how to make my, my toys uh, run themselves, my current project is a uh, claw, um, a children's claw, and I'm using reinforcement learning to teach the claw how to pick uh, candy from the, sorry, sweets, not candy, we're in England, um, uh, sweets from, from the actual uh, uh, machine. So I'm going to now talk a little bit about reinforcement learning, because that's, that's kind of the essence of what Deep Racer is about. So, uh, and, and again, this is from the, the context of someone who is new to machine learning and whose journey started at the beginning of this year. Um, so a portion of scientists have for many years been trying to understand how we as humans learn new skills. Okay? So that could be how a child learns to ride a bike um, or a toddler learns how to walk. And the reason why those scientists are really keen on understanding that is because they want to understand if they can apply that to make machines um, be able to do more human-like activities. Okay? Um, and so whilst we haven't actually got there yet, what we have and what the scientists have managed to uh, understand is that when we learn a new skill, we do that by interacting with the environment. And so um, the, the, the difference, okay, when we're talking about reinforcement, le reinforcement learning compared to some of the other types of machine learning, with supervised and, su and unsupervised learning, you tend to have data, either labeled and, and uh, data, uh, or data that you want to um, classify. With the reinforcement learning, the process is you actually generate the data through um, an agent. And so the, 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 kind of the kind of the key principles of reinforcement learning is that you, have, uh, you create a model that you deploy on an agent. So um, it could be a, a remote control car, uh, or it could be a robot. Okay? Um, and that, that, that agent in, has a number of actions it can do. So a car can accelerate forward, it can turn left, or it can turn right. A robot will have maybe a certain degrees of motion. It might have an arm that can, can grab. Uh, and we call that the, um, the action space. And that, age, that agent um, that can do those things typically will do it in an environment. So um, the race car will uh, race on a track. A robot might work in a warehouse. Um, one of our customers, NASA, is using this with the, Ra the, the Mars rover. Um, and so that environment is Mars. Okay? And they've created a, uh, a simulation environment of Mars. Um, but ultimately, like all data scientists and machine learning, you start with your goal, okay? And the goal of Deep Racer is how can you get the car to complete a lap? Uh, and then actually, um, how can you complete the lap in the quickest time possible? So um, with the first, my first experience of trying to build this, okay, I used what's a, a traditional um, imitation learning type approach. I collected the data, okay, the picture, as I drove the car around, I was taking the picture, I was labeling the data, okay. Reinforcement learning, okay, is more behave, is different. Um, and, and the key difference, okay, is when I train a model based on the data that I've created, that car will only perform as good as me. And I'm a terrible driver, okay, so it's going to perform very, very badly. With reinforcement learning, you create an agent, and that agent explores and exploits its environment. So therefore, what, what it opens up is the possibility of uh, new moves or improvements to how you as a, as a human might interact with it. And you, you might have heard of the, um, uh, the, the kind of open, uh, uh, open AI uh, challenge that, uh, that defeated the Go Grandmaster, 
or maybe the League of Legends as well, they were defeated by um, a reinforcement learning agent. Uh, and what was interesting in both those cases, okay, is the actual system learnt new moves that the humans had not anticipated or thought of. And here's an example uh, of, um, of this. Uh, oop. Or maybe not. I'm not sure what's happening to my videos today. Let's try. Nope, that video is not working. So I will describe what should be up there. <laughs> Um, so uh, the video that you're not seeing <laughs> is uh, Tetris, not Tetris, uh, Breakout. Uh, and Breakout, um, the game, the reinforcement agent was given the task of learning how to play Breakout. And it knew the rules, it could move left and right, uh, and it knew that if it knocked some bricks, it would get some points, and it knew that if the ball uh, fell through the gap, it would die. Uh, and what happened, the reinforcement agent, after 100 or 200 goes, um, started getting better at playing the game, okay? as good as typically a human. But after about five or 600 goes, it identified new strategies. So it would try and attack the sides of the wall to make the ball go up and at the top and start actually working and getting the points more quickly than it would need to uh, moving at the bottom. Uh, and that was done without a human teaching it. It discovered that through exploration and exploitation. Um, so one of the things that when we talk about um, this with oh. wiggle the wire, there we go. Maybe I should make sure I should stay still. Maybe uh, I'm a bit of a walker, so. Um, so one of the things that um, you know quite often we get asked is that you know you created um, a device to help people learn machine learning, specifically reinforcement learning. How would those customers or how would you? use that in other parts of your business, okay? So um, the, the most obvious use case for reinforcement learning is robotics, okay? Where you've got a, a robot arm or a robot device which has got a discrete set of, uh, of, of things it can do, okay? It might have some, uh, some arms, it, could have, it might have some uh, wheels, and it can do a certain type of activity, okay? Um, we are seeing it in autonomous vehicle um, as well now. Um, fleet logistics and supply chain optimization. We're seeing it um, also in uh, pharma, where they're using it to simulate chemical reactions to, to reduce and identify new compounds that might be useful in, in medicines. Um, so there are lots of emerging use cases where this technology can be applied. And also, <clears throat> one of my favorites is A-B testing. Okay, so on the left-hand side is your traditional A-B testing, where you know what the outcome you want is, um, but you have the different options, and then you decide at the end that you're going to switch over every, all the traffic to um, state A. Whereas reinforcement learning now is being used to still get the same outcome, but the adv advantage to your customers is that you can gradually get more customers using the optimal state before you get there. Okay? Uh, and there's a really good um, website uh, by these people here that um, go through all their um, uh, algorithms uh, and, and experiments in, into doing this. And we also have real customers um, who have, again, had no knowledge or expertise in uh, machine learning, but wanted to grow that as a competency within their business. And so what, um, what they've started doing is um, uh, using DeepBracer as a way to get people within the company excited, form teams, so Morningstar, uh, as an example, they've now got um, 100 uh, teams around the world competing against each other. And in the process of doing that, they're actually learning um, the key elements of machine learning. They're understanding the tooling. And they're now beginning to actually bring that back into their products and service teams. The other interesting thing I like about what they're doing is they're using it, this as a, a brand awareness. So, um, they uh, are outwardly talking about Deep Racer and the, the leagues and how they're competing uh, with a view to attracting new talent uh, and uh, uh, making people aware that they are uh, looking at uh, AI as a, as a technology. So um, I talked about some of the, the, kind of the, the key elements here um, of reinforcement learning as it pertains to our Deep Racer. We have the agent with the race car, we have the racetrack, which is our environment, uh, and then we have this uh, thing called a state. So as um, we don't start off with data, um, with reinforcement learning, um, so what happens is at the very beginning, 
we need to understand what the state is. And based on the state, the, the model that we create will make an action. Um, at the very beginning of the process, it doesn't know anything about the environment, so it looks like it's making random uh, guesses. It, that data is collected, and then it goes through a, a typical type of supervised learning um, uh, training model. Um, that then gets put back onto the car, and now it knows a little bit more about the environment. The way we affect the behavior is through a thing called a reward um, uh, function, which is some code you write in Python that um, you use to um, make the, the, the agent know it's doing something well or bad. So people who have got dogs or children will know that if you want to incentivize the right behavior, um, you might treat your dog um, at the point it's doing something good, um, or you might put your child on the naughty step um, if they're doing something that you don't want them to do. And that process allows the, the agent, the child, or the dog to know um, whether um, what they are doing is the right thing or the wrong thing. Um, so this process happens continuously. We, uh, it's generating data, and that data is then used to train a model, which is deployed on the car, um, and then the car over time improves. And I'm going to show, uh, if I have time at the end, uh, a very quick um, demo of what I started about three hours ago, and we'll see how well it's actually driving itself around the car. Um, so if I just go into one, deep, one particular part of this, so if we look at how it uh, uh, understands uh, the environment, it takes images from the camera on the car. Um, so all uh, reinforcement learning agents take input. Um, it goes through what's called a policy network, which is uh, designed to understand, based on the input of the image, what is the best action uh, to take. So we have a, a discrete action space of, I can turn left, I can go faster, I can go right. If I was in a robot, um, it might be which arms I can, I can use, which fingers or digits I can use. And um, we will get to the, 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 the best outcome. Now, the best outcome will lead to an action which will generate a reward, which is created in the reward function. And we use that process to, uh, over, over many, many iterations to generate that data that's trained. So, um, which is that, that model there. And, it, and this iterates. And during the training process, which might be uh, one hour, one week, uh, sorry, one hour, maybe uh, four hours, but you can go up to one day, one week. It's up to you how, how long you train. So reward function, this is the behavior that controls really how the agent works. Um, so it's Python code, and in, this is a very simple one, okay? And what um, this is showing is not really that important. But what is important is you can see that we have different rewards um, that we give the agent based on specific characteristics that that, that that agent is doing. So in this particular one, we are rewarding driving that goes down the center of the line, okay? If it, the further it goes away from the center of the line, the less points it gets, which means over time, the model will learn that I get more points for going centrally, and therefore, I will do that. And in theory, that should allow the car to complete a lap. And if it was a robot, for example, you might give it different reward, reward functions based on have you caught the object or have you moved the object to where you need to move it. But with this comes some danger, OK? Um, because writing reward functions is actually a lot more difficult uh, than it looks. Um, and one of the, one of the challenges um, is the intent you have versus the outcome. Um, now, this is a, one of my colleagues. He took, he took this um, picture, and the first thing I asked him is, why did you get so close to the second most deadly snake, uh, apparently, in the world? Um, and um, the reason why it's a snake is there's an effect called the cobra effect, um, which comes from, uh, apparently... Uh, sometime in the past in, I think it was in India, where the local government were having, or the local authorities were having problems with cobras. And, they, and so they thought, I know, what we'll do is we'll have a cobra bounty. And when people bring in uh, dead cobras, we will give them some money. And they thought, so the intention was, that will eradicate all the cobras. What actually happened was people started breeding cobras, and they actually had far more cobras than they had before because people saw it as a way of generating revenue. 
Okay? And that's the same thing with reward functions. You might think you're doing one thing, but actually the outcome uh, becomes very separate. So actually write, writing reward functions in, re in reinforcement learning is actually very, very difficult. And I wonder if this video is going to work. Oh, is this? Yes. Oh, yes. Fantastic. My first video that works. Now, this, okay, this reward function was supposed to incentivize the robot to place the, ro the box at the furthest point of the arm. Okay. The reward function wasn't written particularly well. And through exploration, what the robot discovered is I can throw this uh, and get actually the, the box further away. So this is an example of um, when you don't get this right, you can have unintended consequences. And going back to the, the deep racer model, uh, deep racer um, use case, what we, um, what we create effectively is um, this process where we need to identify how to reward a specific agent. So in this, in this example, when, we go, when the car goes off the track, that's the end of the cycle. Um, and we can see here that we've, we've, it's accrued uh, 4.2 points. And over time, once it actually finishes, it accrues more points. And so the agent learns that the, 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 the path it took on the right-hand side is a, is, a, is a better path. And it will use that to improve over time. And I've got, I've got actually some animations of this working, if this works. No, these animations are not working for some reason. Ah, this one's working. Right. OK, so we can see that as, as, the, um, as the car is trying and exploring the environment, we have the total reward here. OK, and this is the data that gets fed into the training. Once that, tra that, once that model is trained, it then goes back to the agent. And so the next time, it makes better choices. And then we eventually carry that on until we get to the best outcome. Now, this is called convergence. Um, when you get to a point where, actually, I've got a, a better slide for that. Um, but one of the, one of the, the interesting things uh, about reinforcement learning is you have this balance and this trade-off between exploiting what you know. So um, when this model is training, you'll see here that there's a bit where it actually it nearly gets it straight, and then it dips down one. Okay. Now, sometimes what will happen is when you're training a reinforcement model, you will not have the optimal um, path, and your model will play it safe. Um, and so, because uh, it will exploit what it knows. Sometimes you have to create an element of exploration so that it can explore alternative paths that might actually be better. So we have this concept of uh, exploitation versus exploring. Most of the time, when you're training, you'll be exploiting what you know. But that's not enough. You have to have some ex exploration as well. And this is kind of what it looks like from the actual car's perspective. So when a car first starts, when it knows nothing, it's full on exploration mode. As it generates data, increases reward, the model gets trained, it then actually starts ex exploiting what it knows, which is the right-hand side one. And then we get to what the ultimate state is, which is convergence. And convergence really is when your agent okay, has got to the optimum uh, uh, level and does what you are trying to achieve. So again, going back to the objective, the business objective, um, like with all good data scientists and machine learning, you start with the business problem you're, 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 you're dealing with. And so here, the car is now going uh, to the finish line. Um, so we're achieving, we're achieving our ob objective. So now I'm going to show you this in action so that you can actually see what it really looks like. Um, and I'm hoping this is going to work. So this is the, the Deep Racer console. So we can create a completely new reinforcement agent model that will learn how to drive a car in literally um, a few clicks. So after giving it a name and selecting a racetrack that we want to train on, starting with the, the, the simplest ones first, we create our action space 
So our action space is the, is the, is the moves that the agent can do. In this instance, it's a car. If you were creating a robot, it would be all the moves the robot could, could, um, could take. The reward function, which is Python code, and then we have some high parameters, a training duration, and that's it. So literally within a couple of minutes, okay, we've started the process of training a model to learn how to drive a car autonomously around. And that will work, but the car will go around very, very slowly and very erratically, but it will go around. Um, so most of the effort and most of the work um, that people do when they're on this journey, again, our, our motivation for doing this was to help people learn about machine learning, help, about, help them learn about reinforcement learning. What they then do is they start going into the hyperparameters, for example. They start understanding what the hyperparameters mean and how they can use that to tune their model <laughs> to get extra performance so that they can go around uh, the track faster. So it begins that journey of learning, and, and that's actually the journey that I found. So from not knowing uh, very much about machine learning, I, I, I would say that I'm an enthusiastic beginner now uh, when it comes to reinforcement learning, and I can understand my discount factor, my learning rates, uh, my epochs. Uh, and if, you, if, if people talk about that, I actually, um, I actually understand what it is. Um, but what, what this actually looks like um, when the car is actually driving, if this actually works, we should hopefully see, this is the one I started a few hours ago, we'll see how good or not it is. It's, so st it's actually not doing anything. So what this means is, um, this is, this is currently waiting for an update to the model. So the model um, is being trained. Once that updated model is finished, it gets deployed back on the car, and the car will start uh, moving. So that's a case of bad timing on my part. So you're not going to see it moving, unfortunately, uh, although you did see it on the, um, on the, on the, on the video. Um, and then we also um, we use a, a robotics um, simulator. Um, Reinforcement learning works with a, oh, actually, this one's moving. So you can see that is the agent in a virtual environment. The, um, the reinforcement learning model is deployed on that um, virtual environment. When you're working with robotics, uh, which is one of the, the main use cases for this, uh, it's very expensive to try and develop this stuff on physical um, uh, hardware. So they use a lot of virtual simulation. So Gazebo is the tool here specifically. And so what they'll do is they'll, they'll model um, uh, the robot uh, using Gazebo in very much and a very similar way to how uh, game design works. Um, but then they'll, and they'll also create an environment. And then you'll deploy the software onto that virtual ag agent. And it mimics the physics of a real car on a real racetrack. And there are a number of these different types of uh, uh, environments. If you're working with reinforcement learning, um, there are a number of these different types of uh, environments that you can actually use. So oh, there, we, there we can see. We can see it actually going. So actually, it's, it's not going too badly. It's going quite fast as well, maybe taking the outside line a little bit too there. But you can kind of see that. And that was, uh, that was only a few hours ago I started that training. Okay. So that was actually the end of my presentation. Um, I've got one last slide when it comes up. Which, um, if you're interested in knowing more about um, Deep Racer, we've got uh, an online event uh, for AI and machine learning. I'm actually doing a, uh, a separate track, no pun intended, uh, on Deep Racer. Um, I've got, um, I'm lucky to have one of the um, community leaders. Um, so we, we've, uh, what's happened is organically a, a community has built up around the world. We have nearly 600 people who are all working together and competing with each other to uh, create faster reward functions, more optimized uh, hyperparameter tuning, um, all to try and get the fastest time. And so this, commu this community is fantastic, and I'm lucky enough to have one of them uh, who's going to be with me sharing uh, some, some of his experience. Uh, because like me, um, at the beginning of this year, he had never touched reinforcement learning. And actually now he's in the top five uh, in the league. 
uh, and he gets really amazing times, and he's done that through the process of learning. What he says is this is really addictive, and once you start learning, you just can't stop. Uh, and that community, uh, which is, uh, I think, the Deep Race of London community, uh, has people from all sorts of uh, backgrounds, all, all different levels. And as all community events which uh, um, uh, do, the uh, more experienced people coach the, the newbies, and then the newbies then coach the people that join after them as a way of reinforcing their knowledge. Uh, and it's a really amazing thing to see. And we've had people who, again, uh, only joined month, a few months ago and now sort of teaching um, the people who are joining uh, that, that community. So if you're interested, then this is on the 17th of October. Um, it will be covering all sorts of AI and uh, machine learning, um, but uh, also the deep racer. So I'm happy to take questions in the five minutes I've got. Have I got five minutes? Yeah. Right, so I've got... I shan't, yeah, I'll leave that there. So if anyone's got any questions, I'm happy to take. I've got a question. What's the um, military doing with this kind of technology? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. Um, the customers that I work with um, and the customers that are using it are uh, NASA uh, for the Mars rover. We've got Leah as a Dutch medical company that are using it to build a smart walker. So the smart walker helps people who either are out of hospital uh, or um, who are elderly. And it actually, uh, as they walk, uh, the machine learning, the reinforcement mo model that's been trained uh, helps the walker avoid obstacles. Um, it takes them to their bed. It then moves um, automatically to get charged. Um, we've got uh, Black & Decker are using it um, uh, to do security um, uh, in, their, uh, in their facilities. Uh, we've got lots of customers doing lots of different use cases. I'm not aware of, of any of those um, use cases. Um, yeah, oh, sorry. <laughs> so um, it's interesting you, um, you're training the racing car, and I was wondering how can this be mapped to other kinds of problems, and how are your users or clients using it to solve other things like you know medicine or even finance because you could map the results of those kinds of um, solutions as a racing where you're getting close to the solution and not getting close to the solution but are there other types of simulations where you can actually see the results are coming closer or not but not in the form of a racer car but in the form of something else right or or, or is this is this model all about uh, illustrating so, everything in the form of a, of a racer car. So the objective of this is to, ha to teach people the approach you would take if you were doing this for another business challenge, okay? So what do you need to think about? You need to think about your reward function, okay? You need to think about the simulated environment you're going to deploy this in. So we, we provide one, which is a robotics one, okay? But it might be that you might use something like Open Gym, okay, which is another um, open source one that you could do. Um, so as an example, if you wanted to create a... Uh, um, an agent that played video games better than anyone else, okay, you wouldn't use this, you would use that. Uh, and so the tools we have provide support for those if you want to do that. Um, but really, this, this is more about helping people understand in a very simplified way the core concepts, um, the point of which once you get to a certain level, if you want to go further and dive deeper, you can, okay, the, the tools underneath that. Uh, all, all that is supported by our tooling. Yeah, um, but we try and simplify it initially to not um, scare people away, to try and make it simple, make it engaging, and then that brings them in, and then if they want to go deeper, they can. So if I understand it right, then if you, you, you're comparing different techniques or tools in your experiment, you can simulate the results of them in the form of cars racing each other. Is that how I could look at it? So then you can see if one technique's doing better than the other. Uh, is that possible, or does that make sense? Uh, it makes sense to me. It's not what we're doing with this. Okay. So, sorry, there was that this person first. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's the difference between uh, output in the supervised learning and the reward in the reinforcement learning? Because I think that it's really similar. Because you have to optimize the output. The output and. 
I, I'm, I'm not sure I, I fully understand the question. So Sorry. what's the difference between the supervised learning and the reinforcement learning? Oh, supervised learning and reinforcement learning. Okay, right. So with supervised learning, you've got the data. Okay, so if you're doing, uh, let's say you've got a use case of I want to detect fraudulent uh, financial transactions. <laughs> I've got my data set. I've got my good transactions. I've got my bad transactions. <laughs> They're labeled. I can then train a model on that. Um, in some use cases, the environment's too complex. So if, I, if I've got um, a, a car that wants to drive an environment, <laughs> okay, that's very difficult to have data that I can use in a similar way. So, so I, I think I see what your point is, that we're still collecting data, and the data is still then going through a, a, a similar supervised learning approach. Okay? <laughs> but the difference okay, is we use that just for, um, to map the action space. So we see an image, and we, need, uh, and we know that um, we do uh, feature extraction to understand the image, and then we want uh, an outcome, an output of that image, i.e. turn left, go straight, go right. But that is in conjunction with then a reward function, which is a great ascent function, which is based on the action, how much reward did I get? And it's the combination of those, is what, what, which is what reinforcement learning. So there are some techniques that are used in reinforcement learning uh, that are similar, S certainly in the way we've done it with the, the, deep, the deep racer. Okay, thank you, and thank you for your presentation. All right. Um, I know I don't want to keep the yeah, next presentation. I, I was going to say, um, I, I think we'll wrap it up there, but could everybody give a massive round of applause for Ricardo? Thank you. Thank you. Um, so,